Okay, today we're actually going to do something that is good. It won't be a, one of Jack's recipes or Kay's or or the other guy, what, King Cobra or whatever, um, even though I haven't done one of his yet, but I plan to, I plan to. Uh, today we're going to make some steak. Uh, we're going to make some red potatoes and we're going to make some cucumber salad. Uh, and then for dessert, we're actually going to make bread pudding. I took one commenter's advice uh, to use these brioche buns for bread pudding. So that should be pretty good. Bread pudding is one of my favorite things. I did forget corn syrup and I couldn't find any in my cabinets. So I will actually have to make a run back to the store for that, sadly. But this is pretty much everything that we'll need. And we're back. Sadly, I only had one egg left from the farm, so I had to cash in my IRA and get a couple more. Let's one hand these suckers. Oh, <laughs> I pushed that one a little bit too hard. Oh no! No! I'm gonna get good at this eventually. Just gotta fish out the bits. The cats are acting crazy right now. Probably, I don't know if you can hear them, but they're running around all over the house. It's like the savannah in here. That was good. Ugh! Almost. Okay. Is that a shell? No, it's not. Just some white stuff. Alright, I think that's good. No, I forgot to turn the oven on. Okay, time for some cinnamon. In goes the bread. Let me mix it up. I don't know if we need this, but uh, I guess it won't hurt. Hopefully. If it will, somebody in the comments right now is just in the midst of having a meltdown. Alright. Ooh, that smells nice. It calls for raisins, uh, but it doesn't say when to actually add them. Unless I'm missing something. I'm sure it's not part of the caramel sauce. The small saucepan from the sugar water, corn syrup to a boil. Use a paste soup. Continue cooking. Just pop back in the No, it's not there. Large bulk of wine, the beaten egg, cinnamon, and cube bread. Brown sugar, vanilla, milk, and salt. That's yeah, definitely not in there. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing I was supposed to add them, so I'm just gonna add them now. Raisins are one of those things where I think I used to eat them a lot when I was a kid. You know, my mom would make like ants on a log. Sometimes I'll have them now. I, they're, I don't know, I mean, they're okay. Sometimes I randomly crave them, but you get kind of sick of them pretty quickly. I'd just rather have some grapes, I guess. But I suppose they keep longer, which is the point. That's about right. And in we go. I suppose if you wanted to, you could put in some chocolate chips too, and that might be good. 
I've had I've made chocolate bread pudding before, but it's been a long time. <clears throat> this is a good like a dinner to make as a special occasion, just like a romantic thing. Um, I would guess. <laughs> but yeah. I I love I love bread pudding. So hopefully this turns out well. I think I think you could probably put nuts in it too. I should have thought of that. I have I think I have some pecans actually. I wonder if pecans would go good in here. Hmm. I might try it. I still got these from uh, Aunt Myrna's cheese salad, so yeah, let's uh, let's do that. I think we'll put in like half, half of the half, so a quarter of a cup now. And then we'll sprinkle the rest on top. That sounds right. Rather than raisins, I bet I bet dried cranberry would be even better. Maybe I'll try that next time. I guess you could really use any type of dried fruit. You know, any dried fruit that's raisin-like. I get the feeling this is a very, very old recipe, like this is probably something that they made in medieval times. Except without the cinnamon, probably, since spices back then were insanely expensive. Maybe in the, maybe in the Lord's Castle. Okay, let's put it all in the baking dish. I need a smaller dish. Mm, it's probably about the same. This might be a little bit better. I, it's been so long since I've made bread pudding. I don't think, but I don't think you want it to be super thin. That's like that's really really thin, as far as um, the way it's spread out on the on the baking dish. So I think I will cook it in here instead. Okay. Seems better. I'm really dumb. I had forgotten that it needs milk and sugar and all that stuff. So once I put that in, it's probably going to actually need to go back in there. So sorry, false alarm. Let's get this open. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh shoot! <laughs> I forgot this wasn't exactly empty. I was just reaching over to grab it blindly, and now I've got pecans everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna clean up for a minute. Well, keep your eyes peeled for stray pecans. I, uh, I miss my dog. She would have had no problems eating all of these. Vanilla. I feel like I'm making an unnecessarily huge mess as I go along here. So we need half a cup of sugar. Well, that's basically right. In she goes. It's almost as much sugar as I use in my cereal. Just a pinch of salt. I don't actually eat cereal that often, but it's one of those things that when I do crave it, I'll eat like six bowls of it. It's just, it's one of those just random cravings and never in the morning for the most part. It's just like randomly during the day or at night or something, but it's just random and quite passionate. Okay, I'm actually gonna transfer this back. <laughs> into the oven. And we're 
gonna go about half an hour. I'm gonna have to account for breakage. Alright, well I was just looking at some comments of the bread put bread ooh, bread pudding recipe that I'm following and uh, there is people complaining about the consistency. <laughs> so we'll see how mine actually comes out. Uh, but we'll make the caramel sauce now, I guess. And we need a cup of sugar. A fourth cup of water. Two teaspoons of corn syrup. to a boil. I'm guessing I need to keep stirring this probably since it's kind of kind of thick and we don't want the sugar to burn and stick to the bottom. Okay well I was just reading that actually I'm not supposed to stir. Um, I just have to use a pastry brush to, and water to keep the sides of the pan from burning sugar on it so this is a like a rubber brush. I don't... I guess we'll try it. <laughs> Let me switch hands here. Let's uh, prepare the cream, I suppose. Half a cup. Uh, sorry, bros. We're gonna need this. Okay, we're supposed to cook this until it turns amber in color. I got the cheapest bourbon I could find. I don't really drink bourbon. I kind of lost my taste for it a few years ago when I got really, really sick on it. So this one was the cheapest and it was clearly not in high demand since it's covered in dust. <laughs> uh, but for cooking purposes, I, I think it'll be okay. I just need a fourth of a cup of it. There we go. I'm just following the directions online. I have no idea, well, no idea what I'm doing here, really. This is supposed to keep the sugar from burning on the sides, I guess, is what it's supposed to do. I'm not really sure how long this part is supposed to take. We've got time yet, but let's just check the consistency of the bread. Oh! That actually looks a lot better. It looks not quite as thin. I guess the baking is doing that. That looks pretty good. We've got about eight minutes left on the time, so... Yeah, I'm definitely glad I didn't uh, stick with this pan. <laughs> I'm sure the moment I transferred it, someone someone in the comments is probably having an aneurysm. Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom. I wish I had a ridiculous vibrato like that guy from... That movie from The Hobbit, or actually, I think it's from uh, the Lord of the Rings cartoon. I know I can't remember that artist's name. I know he was like a famous singer because I definitely recognize his voice from other songs. I think I think there was an episode of Breaking Bad where they used one of his songs where he's I recognize that voice like instantly. I first knew him from the the Rankin Bass uh, cartoon though. The Minstrel of Gondor. It started with the Hobbit in Gollum's cave of gloom. I can't even. I can't even do it. 
I, I, I have a bit of a vibrato when I sing, but usually just on the tail end of things. I think I'm definitely getting some amber vibes from at least that part up here. Not so much from the rest of it. Getting some burnage. Uh, let's see. I haven't stirred it, but maybe if I move it. That... It's starting to smoke a little bit. I think I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to call it. it. Seems like it's maybe a little burned, possibly. Oh. <laughs> It actually smells okay. Okay, I'm supposed to let it cool now. And I've got it removed from the burner, so... And the dragon smog, the spiders too. Okay, the alarm went off for the baking part. Let's take this... Ooh, that looks pretty good, actually. Whoa! She's swollen up like a volcano. <laughs> that actually looks good. The goblins, the elven king. All right, let's pour in the bourbon. Warm bourbon. Stir that around a bit. Hmm, that smells kind of interesting. Would come to know the power of the Hobbit and his ring, Frodo. I bet this pan is gonna be annoying to clean a little bit. Well, no, it shouldn't be. It's just sugar. As long as it didn't burn black, then it should just clean pretty easily, actually, I would think. Need to bring this back to a boil, and we'll add some butter to it. This time, I think we need to keep stirring. The nine fingers and the ring of doom. I'm sure you guys are like begging and pleading for me to stop, but I can't help it. I think that guy's vibrato is so ridiculous, it just makes me very happy to hear it. Go and go and just go into open a new tab of YouTube and type in uh, the Minstrel of Gondor. Frodo of the Nine Fingers, and uh, you'll you'll hear what I mean. <clears throat> okay, I'm remove this from the heat, and I'm gonna pour in the butter. Just a, it's just like a tablespoon of melted butter. I'll stir that in. Okay, we'll let this cool for a minute while I'm thinking of it. I'll spread these over. You like the salt guy. Eh, well, you can't see that, but it looked cooler in my head. All right, let's pour the caramel over the top. I don't know if we want to pour all of it. It might be a bit much. Yeah, I'm going to pour just that amount right now. I'm actually going to save the rest in a little in a little Tupperware thing, I think. And there's dessert. We'll keep this on handy just in case it needs to be sweeter, which I really doubt. But we'll keep this on standby. Looks good. I hope it tastes good. Okay, for the potatoes, we're actually gonna turn up to 425.
time to go in my mouth. These have been washed. Uh, we're gonna just cut these into basically uh, wedges, I guess. Okay. Some olive oil. First, we're going to, uh, I guess, fry these wedges. I really like my red potatoes to be very crispy. I don't know about you, but that's how we like them. I'm not really following any particular recipe. This is just something that I've kind of regularly made myself um, every once in a while, usually with steak like we're doing tonight. Um, my daughter loves, 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 loves potatoes. So, making a little extra. Like so. And these will actually take a little bit. Now the herb of choice for these potatoes is definitely rosemary. We will strip these leaves away. These are sizzling nicely. I usually let these go a while. Okay, hopefully you can hear me over the sound of the potatoes, uh, but now it's time to kind of roll them around to the other sides. Yeah. Oh, lost one. You don't have to worry about being too exact with this. Potatoes are pretty hearty. Normally I would do this while the oven's preheating, but it was already uh, heated for the bread pudding, so yeah. We don't really need a lot of dill for this recipe, but uh, I like a lot, so I'm probably going to use more than we need. I'll probably just use like a... Yeah, probably like that much. Go ahead and strip the dill off the stems. You could eat the stem too, actually, but I'm just gonna go ahead and strip it off. Oh no! Okay. In goes the dill. A teaspoon of sugar. Half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Let's give these another stir. Salt and pepper. Let's chop these cucumbers. Let's put the potatoes in the pan. I'll put a touch of, well, I'll put a couple drops of olive oil on top of that.
and the rosemary. Pepper. Salt. Very important not to forget this, like I did with the pepper. And we'll do a red onion. Uh, probably not the whole onion, might be overkill, so just a cup's worth. Yeah, I kind of wanted to make this summery salad. I think it's a nice tangy difference between the other things we're eating just as a side dish. And also, since we just had a big snowstorm, just kind of an anti-winter dish. You know, it's March right now. It's not supposed to be so snowy, but well, it's the Midwest and that tends to happen. So no big deal, but uh, this will be like a, almost like a summer salad in the winter. Uh, these steaks are from the farm. I haven't actually even looked at them yet. They should be thawed now, but there's about 20 minutes left of cook time on the potatoes, uh, which is the perfect amount of time for these to rest. So, just open these. They're kind of small, but that's okay. We have a lot of food, so I'm sure they're going to be good. Supposed to be two in here. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. It's a pretty thin New York strip, but hey, that's just fine. We have a we have a lot of food here, so a little bit lighter on the steak. That's okay. They look good though, uh, for the most part. Okay, we're gonna salt and pepper both sides of these pretty generously. This is basically following uh, Gordon Ramsay's recipe that's on YouTube for how to make a good steak. Ever since I've learned how to do it, I've, I've basically done it ever since. Every, every time I want to make steak, um, you got to really rub the pepper grains and salt into the meat. Um, and then we'll let it rest for 20 minutes or so. Doesn't have to be exact. But I like enough pepper to choke a horse, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, my counter is a disaster, so I'm going to clean up a bit before, uh, before it's time to cook the steaks. I'll use one of these onion savers so that I can put it in my fridge, forget about it, and then maybe make some more garbage stew. Alright, got it all cleaned up. Now it's time to take these out.
Okay, and after these cool off, they're pretty much ready to serve. All right. I'm just gonna use the same cast iron that we cooked the potatoes in for the steak. I, uh, I already added the oil, sorry. This is what we need for the steaks. Uh, garlic, butter, fresh thyme, and of course the main part, the steaks. Okay, I think it's, I think the oil's hot enough, so we'll just cook one at a time. Uh, for the garlic, just crush it. About a minute per side. Take out pieces of it and rub it. The cucumber salad was chilling in the fridge for a little while, so it's nice and cool now. Just gonna give it another mix before it's before we serve it. Okay, let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm gonna try the salad first. I've never had this particular kind of cucumber salad. That is delightful. That's really good. Um, this is now forever going to be my go-to cucumber salad, I think. That's actually really, really good. So simple, too. Uh, potatoes, I already know, are going to be good. I make these all the time. They're good. Uh, let's cut into the steak here. Uh, steak is... 
Looks like it's maybe a little bit, it's like medium rare. Might be a little more done than that actually, but I prefer mine medium rare or even rare, honestly. Let's give it a try. That is good. Oh my goodness. That is, that is really good. That is really good. Um, wow. Uh, that might be the best steak I've ever made, honestly. <laughs> that, that's, uh, I'm really looking forward to eating more of that. <laughs> Let's try the bread pudding. Wow, the bourbon is really strong. Um, it's been sitting out a while, so I need to heat it up, I think, but it tastes pretty good. Um, it's, not the, it's not the best bread pudding I've ever had, but it's definitely edible, for sure. But it does need to be warmed up a bit. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll taste better if I do that. Um, but yeah, it's good. Very strong bourbon taste, though. Well, that's, this is a really good meal. You can make it as like a romantic thing if you want. Um, just follow the instructions that, that I did in the video and uh, everything will turn out probably pretty good. And uh, it'll seal the deal of marriage. See you later, guys.